Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. The WBO Interim World Lightweight Championship. Upton Park, are you ready? Please welcome into the ring the challenger played in by the one and only Cockney Rejects from Dagenham, Kevin Mitchell. an entrance quite a night down here at Upton Park a crowd of somewhere between 15 and 20,000 gathered here open air as Kevin Mitchell makes his entrance for the biggest fight of his life so far he's got the longest unbeaten record in British boxing 31 fights 31 wins 23 inside the distance but he's really arrived over the last year or so with big wins over Bradis Prescott. Remember him, the man who destroyed Amir Khan's unbeaten record. Well, Mitchell beat him with a beautifully cool display of boxing. Then he took out Ignacio Mendoza with one amazing right-hand punch in the second round. He's on the verge of very, very big things here. But this is a massive test tonight, Jim. Yeah, this is a huge test for Kevin Mitchell, but I feel the time is perfect. I think he's been brought along properly throughout his career. A mixture of tough matches and good matches with his style and skills would be developed. And I think I see this may well be surprised at the power in Mitchell's punch. He's a very strong puncher. And the discipline he's shown in his last couple of performances, he is well ready to move into world class. But this is a huge step up against a proven world class fighter. Just look at the people trying here to get pictures of him, to touch him. He wants to get involved now. Frank Bruno, in his interview with Adam Smith just now, touched on, I thought, on a very good point. He mustn't be too pumped up. He's got to be cool, particularly with the kind of opponent he's in with here tonight. He mustn't get carried away with the occasion. He certainly didn't against Prescott, but I think this is something else again here. You can almost feel that everybody's running on adrenaline here. I think we have to accept tonight, at some point, he's going to have to stand his ground with Katsidis and tee off with him. It's going to have to happen. He's not going to outbox Katsidis the way he did Bredis Prescott, so he has to be primed up and ready when that time comes. Quite an entrance, wasn't it? Accompanied by the Cockney Rejects Band. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome into the ring the WBO Interim World Lightweight Champion from Toowoomba, Australia, Michael Katsidis. Coming in, a la Russell Crowe, his countryman, dressed as a gladiator, loves to do that, Katsidis. I'll tell you something, this fellow, what I've seen of him, and we saw him over here against Graham Earl, he's one of the most entertaining fighters in world boxing. He doesn't really think he's earning his living unless he's in a tear-up, does he? Well, he cares about the fans and his style. I mean, he's not a master boxer, but we have to remember, he's only lost right at the top level, Casamayor and one. Diaz, Casamayor, he was ahead in points at the time the end came, and against Juan Diaz, it's gone to a majority of points, so this guy is much more than a crude slugger. 
he can box, he can he knows how to pressurise fighters. This is really going to be a tough, tough night for Kevin Mitchell. From Toowoomba in Queensland, out in the wilds of Queensland, Michael Katsidis has made himself a big name in world boxing in recent times. He might be the most dangerous unarmed man in Australia. We've got an Ashes battle in there tonight. It's England against Australia. And also as part of his arsenal, he is always super fit. He knows he wants to grind an opponent down. That's what his tactics are built around, so he has to be in perfect physical condition to do that. And he always has never been found wanting in that department. No shortage of showmanship pre-fight here for the big, big crowd. Promoter Frank Warren must be delighted with the turnout here for this. Here's the tail of the tape. You can see this four years older, more experienced at the top level. About the same height, aren't they there? And both inside the nine stone, nine pound lightweight limit, which they have to be. Slight reach advantage for the Australian. See, this has been a pro for nine years, Mitchell for the last seven. Mitchell's actually had more fights despite a big injury crisis which nearly ended his career at one point. About the same knockout percentage of three quarters. The odds say Kevin Mitchell is going to win this fight. He's two to one on at the start. Ladies and gentlemen, Please be upstanding for the national anthem sung by our very special guest this evening from Dagenham, X Factor finalist, Miss Stacey Solomon. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble God save our queen, send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to Championship of the world, live and exclusive on Sky Sports HD. Your officials are appointed by the World Boxing Organization and the British Boxing Board of Control. Your three scoring judges at ringside are Mr. Williams Lurch from Chicago, USA, Mr. Jose Torres from San Jose, Puerto Rico, and from Brussels in Belgium, Mr. Andre Van Grudenroll. Your WBO supervisor is Mr. Itzvan Koko Kovac of Hungary and your British Boxing Board of Control steward in charge is Mr. John Handler of Hertfordshire. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Dave Paris from Woodlesford Leeds. Your timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Mick McCann. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner is a man making his first challenge for a world title. He brings with him an unbeaten record of 31 straight wins with 23 coming by way of knockout. Already he has landed the British and Commonwealth titles at super featherweight and earned this world title challenge with a stunning victory over Bradis Prescott in December. 
at yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled nine stone, eight pounds, eight ounces, and is wearing the famous claret and blue of West Ham. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Dagenham, East London, England, presenting and introducing the reigning WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion and the challenger for the title, Kevin The Hammer Mitchell. And across the ring, in the red corner, stands the interim WBO World Champion. He brings with him a record of 26 wins from 28 contests, with 21 coming by knockout. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled at nine stone, eight pounds, six ounces, and tonight he wears black shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing from Toowoomba, Queensland, Australia, the reigning and defending interim WBO lightweight champion of the world, Michael the Warrior, Katsidis. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Punch me the knuckle part of the glove. Break when I tell you to. And if one of you goes down, the other go to the furniture for time. Okay, shake hands, boys. Good luck to you both. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three-minute rounds for the interim WBO Lightweight Championship of the World. Can Kevin Mitchell pass the test in front of his beloved EastEnders here? Look at Katsidis ready to go, look at both of them here, they can hardly wait to get at each other after all the build-up there's been to this fight. It's in West Ham, but it feels like a big Las Vegas fight night here, doesn't it Jim? Tremendous atmosphere, but what a tremendous event, this is a fight that can't fail to live up to expectations, good job from Katsidis. Mitchell with the classy jabbing straight away, one, two, three of them landing on Katsidis, who's only lost in his career to two world champions. Came over here before, he was in a thriller with Graham Earl, voted fight of the year 2007. There were four knockdowns, and Katsidis destroyed Earl that night, although he had to take account himself. He was touching down, and his knees were buckled by one Earl shot. That was after the towel had come in from the Earl corner. So intense was Katsidis' assault. And Mitchell getting the jab off nice and quickly, keeping Katsidis at arm's length, which is what you want to do. He wants to stand his ground, he wants to do this with movement, but when he punches, he wants to punch with authority. You have to gain the respect of fighters like Katsidis, you can't allow them to march forward, and this is a good positive start from Mitchell. It can be a dynamite puncher, Katsidis, and it'll be a big moment, really, the first time he lands flush. Mitchell doesn't really want him to do that often not that there's too much doubt about Mitchell's chin but he is in here at a deeper level than he has been before there's no doubt about that this is a step up from the Prescott fight and here Katsidis has him where he wants him on those ropes Mitchell has to get out of that there there may, may be moments of crisis along the way here they've had enough drama already at West Ham with the football this season there might be more here tonight well there's no question there's going to be times here when Mitchell's going to have to take big punches and come back with punches of his own. And that was the first real assault that Casidas launched and it looked pretty impressive. Mitchell doing well with the jab at long range, but didn't cope with Casidas up close too well there. He's looking to jab and use the ice cool tactics that served him so well against Bradis Prescott. Mitchell in the red trunks, the claret trunks, I should say, the famous claret and blueies wearing of West Ham. You see, there's not setting the pace the way I expected him to do, but this is not his 12-round plan. He's obviously just having a look at Mitchell, just working things out. But he hasn't been as busy in the opening rounds as expected. Mitchell maybe just nicked it with, 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 with the jab, the accurate jabs. Boxing well, Mitchell, on the move, and punching with authority, that's what's required here. Katsidis is looking to cut off the corners while he does that. He's after him here, he knows what Mitchell's going to try to do, because he's looked at tapes of the Prescott fight. He's looking to wheel away here with those big right hands, Mitchell has to be careful that he isn't shaken up. I think Mitchell might have just nicked the round on the jab there. 
little bit quicker. Yeah. Remember, it's a big ring. You cut it off. And then let's not start to chase him across the ring. Brendan Smith working the corner there. Look, I see this produced the more impressive work uh, twice in the round. I don't think it did enough to win the round. My worry has always been that Casidis could maybe overwhelm Kevin Mitchell in a couple of signs in the opening round. That, that is not impossible. He did get to him a couple of times. Gave him some uncomfortable moments there. Almost chased him across the ring at one point. Black Trunks, remember, Katsidis, who holds this interim world for the WBO in the lightweight division. The winner of this should fight the winner of Juan Manuel Marquez, one of the top pound-for-pound -pound operators of recent years, who fights uh, Juan Diaz soon for the title itself. It's a little bit complicated, but put it this way, Mitchell is a big league player, should he come through here. Puzzled with Katsidis using these tactics, uh, boxing away from home, you usually feel you have to do that a little bit more, but he's backing off, circling around, just coasting here. Is he trying to draw Mitchell on to something? Again, not what I expected from him. Something a little bit different here from Katsidis. He's the one giving us the lateral movement. Now, that wasn't in the script, was it? Good solid job there for, from Mitchell. But he's just trying to make Mitchell do something a little different, isn't he, here? Good stuff from Mitchell. Combination punching, then away again. But can he stay away? But Mitchell has proved he can box under pressure for 12 rounds. He did that against Prescott. Not quite so intense pressure as we're seeing here. But he's coping with it well. He's landing good snappy punches. You have to get this fellow's respect. I think he's doing that. Well, he's got 16 wins himself inside three rounds, Mitchell. He thinks he might be the puncher in this fight. He can mix it up, he can box, or he can blast a bit. Sometimes he used to get carried away earlier in his career, a bit too wild, rushing things a little. He's matured a lot after a bad hand injury, which meant he had to go and work on the London Tube for the best part of a year. Working the night. Thought he might have to retire. Boxing with a cool head here. You see, there's not really, so far in this round, been able to do anything really effectively marching forward in a straight line walking onto the jab good right hand got there but back came Mitchell with something else just like you said getting his attention just keeping Katsidis off balance outboxing him in this round outboxing him quite comprehensively at the moment never right Katsidis off though there's that very fast right hand he really does whip that in it's a danger shot I think it's the pressure is going to be the tough thing for Mitchell to cope with good right hand from Katsidis. And the left hook as well. Mitchell doesn't really want to stay there if he can help it. Not for long anyway. What worries me is that Katsidis seems able to bully Mitchell when he, when he turns it on. He doesn't turn it off and he's been lazy again for most of this round. And Mitchell has landed the punches. But I wonder if his plan is to sack the energy from Kevin Mitchell. Under everything, son, keep yeah. doing it. Run jab, jab, keep him. He, no he can't get set with that, with yeah. that jabs in his face. And then let the combination go. Yeah. And then let one big one go. Yeah. Don't get trapped on the ropes. No, Jim. Please. Please. Come on. Yeah. Jimmy Please. Tibbs, he's, he's got his son in the corner as well. Mark there, Frank Hopkins on the far side in the corner. Big job tonight for them. They have to get it right too here. And not get carried away by the intoxicating atmosphere that uh, we have here at Upton Park tonight. Claret Trunks, remember, of Kevin Mitchell, trying to do it here for East London. The latest in a long line of very stylish, talented Cockney fighters. Cassidis has got him here! Cassidis has got him with one! Shook him up! Mitchell holding on, trying to buy time! And Dave Parris steps in there at a vital time, maybe he was certainly shaken up. Bad moments these for Mitchell. Mitchell has to cover, he has to grab hold, he has to survive here, he should not be fighting back, he doesn't have the experience at this level, he's badly stunned. Well, he had to come through a torrid sixth round against Carl Johansson earlier on in his career, Mitchell, he did that in a British title fight, but this is much more serious. Can he keep his head in what is now 
A crisis, the legs don't look too clever to me, Jim. There's no power in these punches because the legs don't look too clever. Although that was better, he got some leverage into that left hand. He got one with just there, him to buzz up Katsidis for a moment there. But Katsidis will keep on throwing, he knows he's had Mitchell in trouble here. Mitchell somehow needs to get through this round, but there's a long, long time left in the round, Jim. There's a confused look. And Kevin's face as though he's still stunned by those punches. He took some tremendous shots there, certainly nothing wrong with his chin. Legs are looking a little bit stronger again, he's on the move. Needs to get life back in those legs. Can't see this is just going to tee off on him in one other shot. Could shake him up, but I think can see this has been hurt once or twice in this round. Mitchell can punch two. What drama here we have in round three. And the snap is back and Mitchell's punches again. Oh, big left took it's hurt him. He's out of it here, it's going to be stopped. It is all over. Kevin Mitchell's dream has died. And Michael Katsinis has blown him away in the third round. This tearaway Australian has ripped up the script here tonight. And Mitchell is taken out. What a depressing thing for the big crowd here and for Kevin Mitchell. But take your hat off to Katsidis. He really is a warrior. Yeah, no question about that. I said earlier the one thing I was worried about was that uh, would he be overwhelmed by the pressure and power and physical strength of Katsidis. And I think that's what happened in the third round. Boxing beautifully, using the jab, tactics perfect. But I took some tremendous punches, but again, but did he improve that he is? genuine world class, he can come back from this we knew it was going to be tough for him we knew he was facing a man who has proven himself at this level and as you see you have to hand it to Katsidis he did it the hard way but he got the job done I think one of the problems Mitchell had in that round is the trouble came early in the round and he had a long long time to get through after that yeah that was a thunderous left hook but his tactics were wrong but when you're stunned you have to go into automatic pilot and you grab hold you survive you take a knee you do anything just to get through the crisis but kevin is macho and he wants to come back and, and, and blast back but he did regain the strength in his legs he did regain the power in his punches and he did stop katsinas in his tracks but still leaving himself wide open defenses were scattered and this is where katsinas really went for it and, and this is the point where he had to clinch or he had to take a knee, had to do something to stop the punches coming his way, but he's been rolled around by the punches. No choice but for referee Dave Paris to step in and stop that. Big, big left hook, I think. Watch this in here, there's a big left hook, and I think that really, there, there, that's it, he's gone then. More punches, referee took exactly the right step there. He had to save Mitchell from any more. But Michael Katsidis, we saw him here against Graham early, was sensational that night. He was sensational again tonight. And it's a bad news night for British boxing and Kevin Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1 minute 57 seconds of round three, your referee, Mr Dave Paris, has stopped the contest. He deemed that Kevin Mitchell was in no position to continue. The winner and still the WBO Interim World Lightweight Champion from Toowoomba, Australia, in the red corner, Michael the Warrior Katsidis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the talented and the gallant Kevin Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell stunned, the dreams turned into a nightmare, Johnny Nelson. Chris Jabs coming from Kevin Mitchell, but Cassidis, he was prepared to, to throw it all in. Uh, if this man's spending three months in Thailand preparing for a fight like this, you know he's, he'll have roughed it out. And he was walk, trying to walk Kevin down and walking into the jab because he, he was so determined. Such a good start for Mitchell, you know, he, he got on the jab, he looked as if he wasn't overawed. You know, the jab was working well. Katsidis seemed to change tactics, didn't he? You know, you wondered what, what was going through his mind, how he was going to do it. But then when he put the pressure on, what we know he's good for, he got the result. Let's hear from Kevin Mitchell now, talking to Adam Smith. Kevin Mitchell, a devastating defeat for you. Can you put that into words for us? You know, it was one of those things. I, I knew he was a big punch. I knew he was very heavy-handed. And I, 
he done, he done well. You know, he, he moved off me, boxed me, lured me in for the attack, and then bang, caught me. Bobbing me on the ropes and um, shook me, and then I'll come try. Two or two, I didn't think, realise I was that band to watch on the camera when he caught me with the left hook. I've sort of swayed over to my left. You know, good shot, good fire. I'll come back from that. 31 straight wins, seven year career with the tactics to try and box him. I mean, you started well behind the jab. Yeah, I, I, the tactics was to start boxing him. He pans off on his back foot, lured me in a little bit, and walked me on the one. That's what he done. And, no, he done well what he done. And Graham Earl, who, uh, who lost to him as well, said that, you know, you're never going to meet a bigger puncher than Katsi. Was it that, his physical strength? No, you know, I've, I've been in with big punches, like some um, Carl Jennison, Breeders Prescott, big punches, you know. But I mean, I lured into a shot, walked onto one, bang, no, it was easy as that. You can't be like, making mistakes in this game like that. I, I made the mistake and I paid for it. Thousands came out to see you at West Ham. Yeah. Unfortunately, not the night you wanted and dreamt of. But yeah. can you come back? Can you build from this again? Yeah, most definitely. You know, it's only it's a one-off. You, you land a good shot, and I'll be back enough for the summer. Where they go on again? 100. Kevin, thanks for your honesty and thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. Yeah, very brave to come out and talk after after that very very disappointing performance. Can he rebuild from this, Johnny? Listen, it's the first time he's tasted defeat against a, a, a class operator, a man that, that basically played how this fight would, would, would fall out. So, Kevin Mitchell, he, 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 they pulled, he, he, he got stopped at the right time, not damaged, it's, he knew exactly what went on, so he can fight again. Fight him surely, again. surely will, Glenn, take a, a long time to get over that. You know, as it happened, the, the stop has come pretty quick. He, he didn't take a, a long you know, systematic beating in the fight. So, you know, I think he, he was OK with that. You know, I think he'll come again. Michael Cassidis talking to Adam Smith. Michael, you've came over, you've silenced the British fans, you've broken our hearts again, but you did a great job in there, didn't you? Uh, oh, it was fantastic. And, you know, it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be here and in front of 30,000 people, possibly, you know, I would just hope and it would just be a dream for one day these people can come and support me. It would just be absolutely fantastic. What were your tactics? I know you didn't know too much about Kevin Mitchell. He was good behind his jab early on, but it was just about the pressure and the aggression to get to him. Mate, I, I feel I'm the best I've ever been. Um, you know, I've gained my way, and, and my, my good friend, trainer manager, Brendan Smith here, we've worked hard, and I've been away from my family and my new baby girl, Kalia, and Kumi for three months, and I love you very much, and, and, I, and I just want to say happy birthday to my father-in-law, Haruko, and, of course, Bradley Smith is like... He's Brendan's dad, so the whole family and the whole of Toowoomba, Australia, thank you very much for the support you and me always in my heart. Thank you very much. Serious preparation in Thailand for a serious battle. You got it done. Where do you go from here, Michael? Well, now I'm just going to enjoy my title. I am, I am the world champion. And uh, look, like I said, I can't leave England at the moment anyway because of the volcanoes. So <laughs> I want to stay here, mate, and just look at the capacity of the crowd. Look, I don't care who the people are cheering for, 20,000, 30,000. There's, there's, there's 20 odd thousand passionate people here cheering, supporting the sport that I love. And that means everything to me, regardless of who they're cheering for. And thank you very much, England. Thank you very much. You've been great to me. Thank you. You've been a total pleasure. Come back soon and maybe we'll find someone to beat you. Cheers, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, that smells good.